Good morning, a very warm welcome to church this morning on the 10th Sunday after Trinity. And we're going to begin with a cheerful song. Uh, so you might have your masks on, you might be a bit restrictive, but at least let's get some cheerfulness at the beginning of our worship. It's hymn number 127. Come, let us join our cheerful song. Please stand.
is for today, the 10th Sunday of Trinity. Let us pray. Let your merciful ears, O Lord, be open to the prayers of your humble servants, and that they may obtain their petitions. Make them to ask such things as shall please you, through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive, and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Our first reading from Kings. The first reading is taken from the first book of Kings, chapter 19, verses 1, 4 to 8. Elijah went a day's journey into the wilderness, and came and sat down under a solitary broom tree. He asked that he might die. It is enough now, O Lord. Take away my life, for I am no better than my ancestors. Then he lay down under the broom tree and fell asleep. Suddenly an angel touched him and said to him, Get up and eat. He looked, and there at his head was a cake baked on hot stones and a jar of water. He ate and drank and lay down again. The angel of the Lord came a second time, touched him and said, Get up and eat. Otherwise, the journey will be too much for you. He got up and ate and drank. Then he went in the strength of that food for forty days and forty nights. To Haram, the Mount of God. This is the word of the Lord. Amen. Our gradual hymn is the hymn 321, How Sweet the Name of Jesus Said.
change from the sheet due to the fact that we've got a, a locum vicar in next week and he asked if he can have today's reading next week. I think he's doing the same sermon two weeks running in different places. <laughs> the scamp that he is. So we have a different gospel from Luke. Uh, you have a, a sheet with one version of it on. I don't know if the room has got the same version. Oh, well, no. All right, so we're together on that. Okay. Thank you. Lord. of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Luke. Glory, Glory to you, O Lord. Lord. Do not be afraid, little flock, for your Father has been pleased to give you the kingdom. Sell your possessions and give to the poor. Provide purses for yourselves that will not wear out, a treasure in heaven that will never fail. Where no thief comes near, and no moth destroys. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. Be dressed ready for service and keep your lamps burning, like servants waiting for their master to return from a wedding banquet, so that when he comes and knocks, they can immediately open the door for him. It will be good for those servants whose master finds them watching when he comes. Truly, I tell you, he will dress himself to serve, will have them recline at the table, and will come and wait on them. It will be good for those servants whose master finds them ready, even if he comes in the middle of the night or toward daybreak. But understand this, if the owner of the house had known at what hour the thief was coming, he would not have let his house be broken into. You also must be ready, because the Son of Man will come at an hour when you do not expect him. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. This sermon is going to be a participatory sermon, but it may be easier for you who are at home, uh, depending whether you're still in your pyjamas or your dressing gown. That makes a difference. This is a participant sharing clothing program. And I'm looking for a volunteer. More of that later. Because of the, the feeble translation we had of Luke's Gospel this morning. Uh, and sometimes these Bible translators go all a bit guardian-y to make it more accessible. Uh, and uh, we miss what is the true daily telegraph element of some of the Greek phrases. And one of those appeared today in our thing. So verse 35, which you have in front of you, be dressed, ready for service. That's not what the Greek says. The Greek says this. Let your loins be girded. <laughs> Anybody have their loins girded? Because we're going to practice that now. Depending what you are wearing. And that is why I need volunteer. And it's not just an idle rector's fantasy. This, this, the Greek makes a difference to the meaning of this reading and the force of what Luke is telling us Jesus told us all those years ago. So we're going to try some loin girding. <laughs> a 
and you can participate. But you need to be wearing a tunic. And this is pretty much a tunic as would have been worn by men and women in Jesus' day. Now, for this, I'm conscious that the, the cheap seats at that side <laughs> can't see. So, any volunteers who are actually wearing something like a tunic to stand there and be a kind of repeating action? Any volunteers from the choir? Any? Well done. Uh, I'm going to ask in a kind of non creepy way what's under your cassette. <laughs> I'm picking it over. Alright, we're good. We're good. Because if you're at home or here, do not attempt this with a mini skirt or a kilt. <laughs> so, Penny, who stand over there in front of the, uh, uh, the repeating uh, signal, and, and loin girding would have been an everyday action, but a very important action that both men and women in scripture would have done. You need to gird your loins for most daily activities, apart from standing around and, and, and chatting. So this is how a loin would have been girded. So you gather up your tunic and pull it over your bottom at the back with a bit of a wiggle. A bit higher pen, we need a, like, a, like a pair of knickers. <laughs> and then we hold this bit in front of us, right out with the right at the end. Obviously not used to get the no, no, it's not easy. So you like this, so your tunic is pulled up, you're already feeling a little vulnerable. You take this bit, like a bit of rope, and you pass it underneath. <laughs> you tuck it up, you spread it out, and then you tuck it in your belt at the back. Oh dear. And then, if I haven't put so much weight on in lockdown, this has a fit. There is a girded loin. My dress, my tunic, has been turned into a nappy. Because that is in effect what it is. But what I am now able to do, as, as an Israelite Hebrew, uh, as if I was in the Israelite army, I would be able to fight because my legs are free. If I was at home, on the distaff side, I could clean the floor without getting my tunic in the way, Penny. Just but that's your bit, so. that was the floor. <laughs> okay, yeah. what is that? <laughs> but it was, it was a significant action, getting ready to serve and to obey and to do. And be dressed to get ready just simply doesn't convey that kind of transformation in dress and attitude that girding your loins would have meant to somebody who heard Luke's words or lived in Jesus' time. Anyway, thank you, thank you very much. A uh, uh, round of applause for our glamorous moment. <laughs> you ungird, you just drop the, drop the belt, drop the, drop the sash, and, and go back to normal. And it's important that that Luke tells us this, because he says there are three things that Christians should be doing in this passage. So first of all, gird your loins, which means there's action ahead, you have to prepare to do it. You have to get yourself in the frame of mind to work for the Lord. This isn't going to happen just by chance and by you drifting along doing the Lord's work this week in this village or wherever you are means your active preparation. You need to gird your loins, which makes a difference to how you behave this week. Secondly, have your lamp ready. Have your light ready, it says to these servants who are waiting up for the return of the master. You are going to go into places where it is dark, possibly dangerous, you need to have a lamp ready. Again, you need to plan ahead. This week, you do not know who you're going to meet in the street, at home, at work, whatever. The lamp, the light of the Lord, you need with you. You don't know what you're going to encounter, what you're going to find. And that's why Luke 
mentions that. Again, it's a planning thing. And finally, he says, in the Greek, I don't know what this translation has here. Uh, be like a man, says the Greek. <laughs> this says, be like a servant. You can see why they do change some things. Be like a man. But it's not the gender bit that's important. The next bit is, be like a man, obedient, says the Greek, to their master. Be like a man, obedient to their master. And that is the final, the, the third bit of getting our Christian life working this week. Waiting for the master, obedient to the master. None of the other bit will work. The loin girding, the lamp, the getting ready, going out into the darkness of the world, unless we are obedient to the master. A lot of our problems are because we try to do Christ's mission and ministry on our own. We think we have a good idea, and I've read hundreds of them in your surveys, but unless those ideas and our plans for this week are prepared, are ready, and are grounded and rooted in obedience to Christ's words to us, those plans won't work. So I think there's a very good lesson for us in our ministry and our mission in this church. It's going to take some effort. It's going to change us. Girding our loins is a change to everything. It's going to need some looking ahead and some planning. And it's going to call us to be obedient, not to our own selves and our own prejudices, our own desires, but obedient to the Word of God. And when you get those three things lined up, the mission this week works on its own. Amen. Intercessor wasn't informed of the changing that and all that, so uh, these um, prayers for those for next week as well. And we have to uh, remember the story of Elijah to make sense of what I have to say. Let us pray. 
and they begin and end our intercessions with the example of Elijah. Let us pray for the church and the world as we bring before you, Lord, our perennial concerns about wars, the environment, justice, deprivation, pandemic. We also look for your voice to answer our prayers. In the chapter before next week's reading, Bert Elisha, we'll have the story of the um, story of Elijah listening for the voice of God and finding it not in the earthquake, the wind, or the fire, but in the still small voice of calm. As we pray for our leaders, both church and state, we ask that in the midst of fires, storms, and earthquakes, they and we may also be listening for that still small voice. Justin, our Archbishop, and that he may be refreshed by his transatlantical. We pray for Archbishop Stephen and in his attempt to open up discussion about fractures in society this week. We pray for Bishop Nick, not just for his leadership of his diocese, but his national work on the governance of the church. And last but by no means least, we pray for our as your servant Mark. As we um, take so us forward in your mission and ministry here. Lord, in your mercy. Let's give thanks to the for all those who contribute. For basically, thanks for our, our community, for all those actions who waited for exam results next Tuesday, for all those who may have passed exams in the past but who are not in secure employment, for the local businesses suffering from the effects of the pandemic, for the many volunteers who give unstintingly in time and money to support the political and social life of this parish. I pray for those involved in the community survey that this engagement will give us insights about our mission and ministry here. Lord, in your mercy. Yeah. I will return to Elijah. Next week we'll be sitting under his, his broom tree, mortal fear of Jezebel, isolated, suicidal, but given the strength to carry on by an angel with some cake. Let's pray for the work of the pastoral team here. And for all the other pastoral work done. Informal basis. And let us now pray for those individuals in any kind of need who have asked for our prayers. Pray for Lucy, Jimmy, Tim, Pauline, Nick, Gloria, Janet, Dr. Walker. Susan Andrews, Pat Naylor, Annabelle, Jen Northey, John and Arthur, Stephen Harris, Debbie and Family, Susan Sandlers, and Richard Smith. And also another family of the Warren Monks, who have recently deceased and died. We pray for them. Lord, in the yeah. Accept these prayers. They say, Jesus Christ, our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. The uh, notices for the week. Uh, Arthur mentioned the survey. We're very, very nearly done. survey and, and uh, thank you very much to those who have filled in. I have very much enjoyed reading all the congregational services uh, surveys that have been returned, there are 80 of them I think so far, and I've also read quite a portion of the community surveys returned. 
which is up to 199. So very, very grateful to all those who have taken the trouble uh, to send us their thoughts, their plans, their ideas, their fears, their anxieties about our church. It, it's, um, it will be a wonderful resource for us when we, when we think and plan ahead. So we're pretty much uh, going to take the boxes away from the post office and the co-op today and tomorrow. But there still is a, a window of opportunity for congregation members who haven't uh, quite got round to filling in the survey online. And that's perhaps the easiest way to do it now. Go on to the St Peter's Addingham website page and the big there, they complete the survey and that will take you through it if you haven't done it already. Uh, and we would like to hear from you because it's been quite fascinating uh, reading what people think. 22nd is the deadline, isn't it? Yeah. So what we'll do at the moment is we are bundling up the printed surveys. We've got several volunteers who are going to type everything that's written in that survey into a programme and eventually we will be publishing every single comment anybody has made the congregational survey or the community survey available to everybody. When I say every single comment, what I really mean is every single comment that I agree with. <laughs> <laughs> there are some, some comments there, a good thing, have made me think again about what I'm planning. I think, mm, perhaps not, something like that. So we really do want to hear from you and every single comment will go online, you'll be able to read everything that everybody said about our church. And it's important, I think, that, that everybody does have a look and read all these comments eventually, uh, because when we sit down and plan, as many people who've read will be most useful, because with the best will in the world, I, I read all the surveys looking for, take all the pews out, and, go, oh, that's good one. <laughs> and ignore all the ones that say, keep it as it is. So the more people that read the surveys, the less vicar's bias will we get into the planning process and we each read them in different ways. And the deadline for that really is 22nd of August. So you've got a couple of weeks left if you've not done the congregational survey uh, to fill it in. Any more notices? Except to say next week uh, I'm away. We couldn't find cover at 8 o'clock. There'll be no 8 o'clock service next Sunday morning. There will be 10 o'clock uh, with Reverend Richard Watson, uh, who is recycling his sermon from today. <laughs> oh, songs of praise. Yeah. On the last Sunday of August, it's not communion yet, it's going to be a songs of praise at 10 o'clock with our back song. And we're going to do it pretty much the way it has been done before. Uh, you tell us what your favourite song is and we'll work it somehow or some of them into the programme and it would be wonderful if those who have chosen a particular hymn could then stand up in the service and say why that hymn is important to them, what it means to them, and, and that will be the pattern of the service. Seven or eight hymns, seven or eight people speaking, and a few prayers. So that's Sunday, the last Sunday of August at 10 o'clock. So uh, give us your favourite hymn, and who knows, it might appear on that Sunday. Thank you, Penny. Anything else? Yeah, just have a look. Ian, any, any notices? We're in the calendar. We've got pandemic, COVID, and August. Not much going on, really, is there? <laughs> so, uh, just wait till September when the whole ghastly thing creaks back into life and it's meeting after meeting after meeting. We stand for the peace. The risen Lord came and stood amongst his disciples and said, Peace be with you. Then they were glad when they saw the risen Lord. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Our offertory of hymn now is the hymn number 463, uh, Lord Jesus Christ, Living Lord, in the 463. <laughs>
page 10. Yours, Lord, is the greatness, the power, the glory, the splendor, and the majesty. For everything in heaven and on earth is yours. Eucharistic prayer A on page 11. The Lord is here. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right, it is our duty and our joy at all times and in all places to give you thanks and praise, Holy Father, Heavenly King, Almighty and Eternal God, through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, for he is your living word. Through him you have created all things from the beginning and formed us in your own image. Through him you have freed us from the slavery of sin, giving him to be born of a woman and to die upon the cross. You raised him from the dead and exalted him to your right hand on high. Through him you have sent upon us your holy and life-giving spirit and made us a people for your own possession. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we proclaim your great and glorious name, forever praising you and saying, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory, O Sanat and Christ. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, O Sanat and Christ. Accept our praises, Heavenly Father, through your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. And as we follow his example and obey his command, grant that by the power of your Holy Spirit, these gifts of bread and wine may be to us his body and his blood. Who in the same night that he was betrayed, took bread and gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup and gave you thanks. He gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Therefore, Heavenly Father, we remember his offering of himself made once for all upon the cross. We proclaim his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension. We look for the coming of your kingdom, and with this bread and this cup, we make the memorial of Christ, your Son, our Lord. Great is the mystery of faith. So through him, our great high priest, this our sacrifice of thanks and praise. And as we eat and drink these holy gifts in the presence of your divine majesty, renew us by your spirit, inspire us with your love, and unite us in the body of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Through him, and with him, and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit with all who stand before you in earth and heaven, we worship you, Father Almighty, in songs of everlasting praise. Blessing and honour and glory and power be yours forever and ever. Amen. At page 20, we pray. Let us pray with confidence as our Saviour has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom of Break this bread to 
share in the body of Christ. Jesus, love of God, have mercy on us. Jesus, bear of our sins, have mercy on us. Jesus, redeemer of all the world, grant us peace. Draw near with faith. Receive the body of our Lord Jesus Christ, which he gave for you, and his blood, which he shed for you. Eat and drink in remembrance that he died for you. And feed on him in your heart, by faith, with thanksgiving. We do not presume to come to this, your table, and to bless the Lord, trusting in our own righteousness, but in your mighty God and great righteousness. We are not worthy so much as to gather our own and be our table. Would you follow the same God, whose nature is always to have mercy? Grant us, therefore, gracious Lord, so to eat the flesh of your dear Son, Jesus Christ, and to drink his blood, that our sinful bodies may be made clean by his blood, and our souls washed with his most precious blood, and we may have a more glorious name, and he has.
just pray. We pray together the prayer on page 24. Father of God, we give you thanks and praise that when we were still far off, you met us in your Son and brought us down. Dying and living, you declared your love, gave us grace, and opened the gates of glory. May we who share Christ's body live his risen life. We who drink his cup give life to others. We who the Spirit lights give life to the world. Keep us firm in the hope you have set before us, so we and all your children shall be free, and the whole earth live to praise your name, with Christ our Lord. Amen. Our closing hymn, the hymn number 33, of verses 1, 3, and 4. Hymn number 33, verses 1, 3, and 4. Thank you. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ.